Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Choppy. Let's go through the European run last night because it was very interesting on a number of respects. And it also kind of helped me make a little more sense as to what was going on after that uh, GFS run, which was really confusing to me. But uh, here we are Friday night into Saturday. We have this first trough that moves on through. OK, so that brings in a shot of colder air, not particularly cold, but, uh, but just colder and gets things uh, back to normal. This vortex here that forms in, in, in Labrador is pretty strong, and it just kind of sits there and rotates. But what's very interesting uh, and different from the GFS is, is that it has a second spoke that comes through here. We have one that comes through um, Sunday night, and that brings it, makes it a little colder. But then we have this, uh, which is now being shown from Monday night into Tuesday. And while literally this would say that low pressure would form offshore, and move out to the northeast, and uh, it would uh, probably miss us with any uh, precip. I want to be a little careful whenever I see something like this, because there is room here for this to be a little bit further to the left, and uh, this would be for, um, say, Monday night and Tuesday of next week. Either way, it does mean that we are going to get a very cold shot of air that's going to come in here uh, for the Tuesday Wednesday time frame so this is a little different now from what the models were this model was showing earlier and other ones are this model has been consistently colder than the GFS that trough does pull out uh, you still can see that what's going on up here uh, in, um, in in Canada with uh, high pressure uh, and uh, a bit of a block that develops there uh, and sets us up for the split flow weather systems moving along in the southern stream and I want to just take a look if we can jump. I'm going to jump to two different regions here so uh, we can get a feel for what's going on across the top of the world. And you can see how this model kind of takes that polar vortex and just sort of rips it apart there, blocking across the poles. Now, it does have a ridge here kind of squeezes a little vortex in between so it's, it's it seems to be having some uh, issues just to try to figure out where uh, all this blocking is going to be developing but uh, again this is something that uh, is just an evolution in the process of evolution let's go to the uh, view here in the east because this will uh, perhaps give a better picture of what's going on um, aloft and here's our First trough for Friday night, Saturday, that makes it a little colder. And kind of weakly doubts it. Now the GF, the uh, European, has a weaker trough that comes through Sunday night. And here's that stronger trough. So you can see that's a pretty good dent of energy here for Monday night into Tuesday and, is, and moves offshore. A little upper low forms there over uh, southeastern New England. So uh, I think what we have to watch out for is whether subsequent runs have this a little bit further to the left. It might make for a Nice uh, cheap thrill for the coast in the in the in midst of uh, very cold air coming down from the north, and then that cold air kind of pulls out. Uh, temperatures moderate, doesn't get overly warm. Also, this is all pretty interesting here. Is some of the models want to make some kind of subtropical storm out of this and move it out to the northeast. Uh, if the atmosphere is as whacked out as it is, a subtropical storm with the name attached to it wouldn't be a huge surprise, now would it? Okay, so this is a short European analysis. I'm keeping it under four minutes. Have a good day and a happy new year. Be safe on this New Year's Eve. And we'll have a Joe Stradamus post that gets into this a little bit more later today.